morning. Good morning. Good morning. A blessing to see you this morning. And we're grateful that you've chosen to come out to worship with us this morning. We're grateful that we have this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. And so we thank you for taking part of your time to come and share in the worship of the Lord. You'll find that uh, things are pretty much the same. Uh, we invite you, please, to continue to remember to stay socially distanced, to wear your mask, to unfortunately not sing. We're going to make one um, change slightly, and that was that um, we're going to ask you, if you will, to murmur softly the Lord's Prayer when we do the Lord's Prayer as a part of our prayer time. And so we'll keep that quiet so as not to, uh, to uh, spread too many of our, our uh, potential germs around. So, okay. And so we're grateful, glad you're here. May we join together for a moment of prayer as we begin our time of worship. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that we have this opportunity to come into your house. Oh Lord, come and bless us. Pour your spirit out upon us and may this time of worship give praise to you. For we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen.
this day. You have blessed us with so much. Your love, your peace, your help and healing, and you give us hope when we can't find it anywhere else. You are the source of all our benefits, and we praise you, love of God. We ask, Lord, that you be with the people lifted up for our prayers this morning. We give praise for the thanksgivings offered. We lift up those who are still struggling. We lift up the leaders of our nations and for our president and for the people who are a part of the journey of seeking a vaccine for this pandemic. We ask, Lord, that you be with the caregivers, give them strength, protect them against the virus, help them to be a source of comfort for those who need their care. We lift up our elderly, we lift up our young. For Lord, each has its particular needs in this time, and we need your touch upon our lives to bring healing, to bring renewal, to bring strength. So come, precious and loving God, guide our hearts, lead us in our time of worship that we might reach out, grab hold of you, and walk confidently into the future that lies before us. Precious and loving God, we praise you, and we give you all thanks in the name of Jesus. And as he taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We take a moment now to have our own virtual um, passing of the peace. So it's a meet and greet time. Please stay where you are, but I ask you to stand and, and say hello to those around you. It's, it's, it's a good morning. Affirmation of faith today. We are taking uh, as our affirmation the one from Romans. is number 887. So I will read for you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you please to remember your church with your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings. You'll find that there are offering plates placed at both doors, and if you need something a little more confidential, there's a white donation box on the stand over by the sound booth. And I invite you to uh, make use of those as you bring your tithes this morning. Invite Lindy to come forward. We're going to offer a song.
Because what we are celebrating is the joining of Christ, Jesus the Christ, with the body called that will be called and is called the church. This joining together is a renewal. It is putting back together that which was torn apart. It is taking all that has been broken and making it new again. And we give thanks for that. You see, because now we have this opportunity once again to live as God intended for us to live. In union with one another, caring for one another, being a part of that family. Weddings are wonderful times. But they are a party. And here in this particular party we find, we find one person who has not wanted to be... Uh, I guess one who fits in at the party and doesn't have his wedding robe on. Now the wedding robe in this particular case also is, a, is something that stands in because we're, we're still talking metaphorically here. It's a parable. And so Jesus takes this and he says this, this wedding garment which was a real part of weddings at that time would be a robe handed out by the person giving the party. It would be the host who would provide these wedding garments to all who came. And here we have this robe, which stands for that robe of righteousness, this, this garment of, of cleanliness that, that we seek to aspire to as we live into the love of God. So we have one who has not a robe to wear. Now, we can think about it just a little bit and we can come up with all kinds of excuses why he might not have his robe on. Maybe he got hot. I was thinking back years ago that, that potentially it had been a real party. He'd been dancing, he'd been drinking a little bit and eating the food and he just go, man, I can't stand this anymore. And like a good preacher takes his coat off and hangs it on the back of the chair. And so he was sitting there without his robe on. We can think of that. Maybe he was afraid of getting it dirty. Maybe he didn't want to accidentally spill wine or food on it as it was a party, you know, and maybe get jostled. There was a real crowd in there. We don't know. But what we do know is that when he came to, uh, to uh, the party, he, he should have been given a robe. When the host came around, in this particular case, when God comes walking through the party, and he looks and he sees one without the robe of righteousness, one who has not accepted this responsibility to be a righteous person because of the invitation. When he sees one without it, he says, how did you get in here without a robe? And the man, bum puzzled at the moment, says, he can't answer. And the host takes the, takes the, the great step of saying, throw him out. Bind him up hand and foot, throw him into the darkness. Because only people who will take on the robe of righteousness shall be admitted to this party. They're the only ones who get to stay. Wow, that adds uh, a lot of complexity to the, to the message that we get today. When we, when we think about parties, though, you know, there's, there's always somebody who doesn't want to be a part of it. If you've ever had um, a birthday party for children, you usually will find one in the crowd who uh, doesn't want to wear a hat, doesn't want to play with the toys, doesn't want to make the noise maker, doesn't want to celebrate with, the, with the, the one being feeded that particular day. And they just go off and they play by themselves and, and, and maybe sometimes they, they get into a little trouble. And I know as a host, when you look on that type of situation going on, you start saying, okay, well, this one's not getting invited again. I'm not going to bring this person back. They don't want to be a part of the party. They, they come, but they dishonor me by not honoring the guest this day. Wow. When we think about it, our lives are built up in this same way. We're always looking, are we honoring the one who's throwing the party? Do we give praise to the one who has by the gift of Jesus, made this a life that is worth living. Wow. When you, uh, when you put it into those terms. Well, then it puts an extra amount of emphasis on us to be bearers of this righteousness into the world. People out there expect it. 
when they look upon someone who professes to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus, let's put it in those terms instead, because Christian is a term sometimes that's misused. But we want to put it into the terms of someone who professes to follow Jesus. Well, someone who does that, you would expect, would be one who seeks to emulate Jesus, who seeks to live as Jesus does, the one who seeks to be bearers of mercy, compassion, healing into this world, someone who helps others, someone who is kind, forgiving, open to building up the family. And when we don't, when we don't wear that garment of Jesus into the world, when we do not show Jesus forth in our lives, people look upon us and they do not praise God. For they look and they say, if this is what one looks like who follows Jesus, why do I need to follow Jesus? And God is dishonored. Thankfully, and I'm grateful for this because that means that all of us have do-overs. All of us have second chances and third chances and fourth chances and 490th chances. We have these opportunities to continue to come back to God and say, Dear God, I have messed up. I need, I need your help. I need your, your forgiveness. I need to be restored. I want to wear again this garment, this presence of Jesus in my life. When we open ourselves up to being bearers of this image of Jesus, God will then seek to work through us. One of the things that, that I've had to learn is not, it's not the things that I do for God that make the difference. It is making myself available for God to work through me that makes a difference. That takes a lot of the burden off. I like that idea. When we don't have to be the ones that are coming up with, okay, what do I do that honors God today? But instead, if we are the ones who say, how can I be open to God using me today? Open my ears to hear. Open my eyes to see and my heart to feel. When we make ourselves available for God to use, then God can accomplish many things which go beyond our imagining. When God accomplishes this, then we're able to give praise. We're able to give thanks to God and help others to do so as well. When they see what God can do, what God will do, then they are able to say, you really need to know this God. You really need to come and to know Jesus. And so that's the journey this day. The wedding banquet shows us that God has an ultimate plan. That plan is for our lives to, to give thanks, to participate in the blessing that he's prepared, and to give people an opportunity to know him as well. And so we give thanks for God this day. And we look for how we might be people who help people who are agents of healing, and people who leave others with more hope than they had when we first encountered them. And through this, may God be praised. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we pray? Oh, loving God, we thank you that you show us your love. Help us, oh Lord, to be bearers of that love to others. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
and so be strong. Be courageous. Be steadfast in your faith. And let all that you do be done in love. Amen.